Hello, good morning, guys. Good morning. Mumengia leo for long, sana. One yes. hour. Yeah. Today we are one hour late. Yeah. Samuel. What is the problem? So let us continue watching that video as we wait for we wait for them to join to Kimaniza your video. We are starting the class, okay?
Okay, let us start the class. Uh, we are not going to wait for people to come again. They meet us on the way because we are already late. Uh, you've seen from the video the types of joining of metal. We have the joining of metals. When we talk about joining of metals, we mean uh, when two pieces of metals are together, we have to join them. The, these are uh, uh, you remember our last topic? Our last topic was on how we can mark out things and measuring out things. So in the process of marking out and measuring out, we are cutting out the pieces of metal to make them into the shapes that we need to make. Them. So today we are going to talk about joining of metals. And in the joining of metals, there are different ways that we can join metals. We have electrical uh, connection and mechanical connections and thermal connections. So we are going to look at, to start with the electrical con connections, how can we join two pieces of metals electrically? So the components and wiring electrical stroke electronic systems must be connected properly to, pre to operate correctly and safely. So uh, you connect connecting methods, we have the first one is soldering. The next one is mechanical connectors, which are the splices, crimp connectors, and wire nuts, and printed circuit boards. The printed circuit boards are normally in the electronics, and it's a very important uh, part to learn because this is what we use in electronics. For example, if somebody decided to join, uh, to concentrate on the line of electronics, you'll find yourself in an electronic shop and you'll be making things like uh, uh, repairing radios, phones, and so forth and so on. So those are the things that, uh, that uh, are very important in the joining of metal to, for, you, for you guys to learn. So you go to the next thing is electrical connections by soldering. What is soldering? Soldering is the bonding metals with a dissimilar alloy of metals. Joining metals with a dissimilar alloy of metals. Now we have, uh, uh, what is uh, to solder? It provides a strong electrical and mechanical connection. In an, uh, it's an alloy of tin, that is uh, the, the, the SI unit and the, the lead, with given properties, for example, 60, 40, 50, 50, tin lead. That is the percentage of each of the combination and has a melting point of approximately 400 farads. So when we look at soldering, everybody knows what soldering is. We solder using a soldering gun and a, a, soldering, a, a soldering iron and a soldering wire. So when we use the two things, we connect, we join a, a metal. We can even join a component like a resistor to the circuit. We can join different things. We can join even a transformer to the circuit. It is just connecting components, components to a circuit. Then we go on electrical connections and soldering will seal on. So you see the equipment that we use in soldering. A good soldering joint requires sufficient heat to bring parts up to temperature. So heat sources for electronic electrical connections, solder, soldering irons, that is 20 to 2000 watts rating, and soldering gun. You can see the gun. The guns are of different types. You can see this, you can see this one, the another one. And these are how, th those are the different kinds of the soldering guns that we have. And then electrical connections, but we see in soldering, Preparing a soldering joint. When we want to, to, to do a soldering joint, what do you do? The first thing that you do is all parts should be clean, uh, free of corrosion, dirt, grease, or oil. Copper should be cleaned until bright. So we have to make sure that we clean these parts. And we talked about methods of cleaning. We can even use a file, we can use a sandpaper to make sure that all the rust is cleaned and wiped out. So make good mechanical connections between parts, twist wires together wrap a wire around the connect connector lug. So use soldering fix to keep joints clean, clear, while heating flux prevents ox oxide formation. So use only rosin flux for electrical or electronic work. These are some of the substances that you guys must know or must learn about. Still in soldering, now this is the procedure, how we do it. And some of you, I know you try to do this. 
uh, where, how to know whether this is a good joint or a bad joint. So a soldering procedure, apply iron gun or uh, to the joint, and then allow joint to heat up. Apply solder to the joint knot tip of the iron gun, then solder should flow. Good joint will be smooth and shiny. And then I'll let the joint cool before moving, then let the solder harden. Don't touch still because it is still very hot. Let me now zoom this out so that you can look at the difference between a good joint and a bad joint. Uh, a good joint, you can see the way it looks like. It is very clean and shiny, but a bad joint might even jump from one circuit to another. So a joint, a soldering joint should not con in interconnect things that are not supposed to be connected. You, they, 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 you can, it is very specific and up to the point. So we proceed. Those who are joining us, please, you mute your mics. Let us proceed. Aha, uh -huh. soldering electronic components. We have, uh, when we have components that we want to solder, so th the components like the transistor, the diodes, the integrated circuits can be damaged by excessive heat while soldering. So the, uh, we use approximately size heat source, lower wattage then, and we, of course we normally say that soldering, uh, it is a, 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 a lower power, uh, because it uses uh, normally these electronic things, all these electronic things use uh, uh, DC voltage or voltage that are, has already been changed from AC to DC. So the power that they use is very little. So it's normally not that dangerous, though it can burn somebody or somebody working on the circuit. So use appropriate size heat source, lower wattage, then use soldering station with the temperature control, if available, and then use heat sink on component leads, hold lead with the needle nose pliers, uh, don't just hold it with your hand, and then use commercial heat sink clips, and then use component uh, sockets, use caution, uh, caution sockets, can also be damaged by excessive heat. Sometimes when we are heating them too much, they can be damaged. So maintenance, how do we maintain the, the uh, and how do we keep safe? So keep the iron gun or tip clean and, and tined and tinned, coated with solder. Then wipe it with damp uh, sponge or cloth. That is now taking care of it. Then use flux or liquid tip cleaner so that we can clean our solder gun. Still on safety, iron gun is very hot. Keep all flammable materials from soldering area. Always assume that the iron stroke gun is hot to avoid burns. Do not cool iron by dipping it in any liquid or water. That is a very good caution. Do not let iron gun contact every any contact electrical Cords, because the moment it, it contacts, it can lead to electrocuting. So soldering, solder con contains lead, wash hands after handling. Fluxes can be toxic and corrosive. Read all instructions and warnings before using. Hot rosins and fluxes give off fumes. Solder in well-ventilated area. Then we talked about the splices. Now, the splices is a mechanical connect connection. We already done with the electrical connection. Electrical connection is about soldering. So mechanical connection is the splices. Mechan it, it is a mechanical connection of two wires made by twisting the, connect the, con uh, the conductors tightly and together. Now, give good, they give good mechanical strength and electrical conductivity. So I'm zooming so that you see how it happens. Now, Western uh, uh, Union spl uh, uh, splice, and then work best with solder, solid wire. You can see how, how you can join two wires. The first step is to, to put the wires together, and then you start twisting one to the opposite direction, 
and now it makes a perfect. So make five to ten turns, tight turns to each side. And then short wire, you can see that if we have a short wire, then a long wire. Long wire is there. If if I have, let, let me say, uh, maybe I have the live and the neutral that I'm supposed to twist or to join using the splice joint. I, I twist them on the opposite. I, I can cut the, the long wire can, can overlap this so that in case of any leakage, it cannot, they cannot meet. So they can, they cannot short. Wire splices, we have the tap splice. You can see that the, the tap slice is like a T. How you can get a branch wire, uh, uh, and all splices can be soldered to add strength and connectivity. It is not a must, but you can. So, for example, you want to tap uh, electricity or or some connection to to another connection. So that is how you tap. You can see how it has been wired. And we have another one called a, a rat tail splice. A rat tail splice is there with bare wires. Bare wires, then they are joined, they are twisted just to the same direction. That is the rat tail splice. Then we go to now crimp connections. What are the crimp connections? Used to join wires or add terminal lugs to end of wires. Now you can see insulated but splice now join two wire ends. This one can join two wire ends because this other end and the other end, insulated parallel slice, and then we have the insulated speed lag fit under the thermal screw. So normally when we are screwing or, or when I'm connecting, this is called a lag. A lag is just is, is, is just like a terminator. I connect it to, lab, uh, to, a, knot, to a nut that I am, I'm supposed to screw so that it becomes very tight. It just acts like a washer but also conducts. Other types of crimps, small crimps connection, we have there, we have the ring lag, uh, we have the, uh, the female uh, disconnect lag insulated, it's there, the male disconnect lag insulated, you can see it. And then the crimping, uh, crimp connectors require proper crimping tools. This is a crimping tool for, for crimping. This one is used especially when we are making a, uh, cables for the low data, like now for internet and uh, CCTV connections. We use this tool to crimp those lags. Go on now, wire nuts. You can see there, we are still talking about uh, joining and terminations. Wire nuts, uh, solderless connections using a conical threaded connector. Now you can see this one, different colored denote number and size of the conductor that can be terminated using the wire nut. So yellow, here is the standard. Yellow is up to two number, that is uh, two number 14 AWG wire. Then 10, 10 you can see the color. It's there, it's the here. It is used up to three number. Then red is there. It is used up to five number, gray up to four and blue up to three number. Printed circuit board. Before I go to the printed circuit board, because we are still going to go through these things again and again, I want now to talk to people. So today people just came a few to class. I don't know what challenge you're getting. Unmute your mics. Mute your mics. Kevin, use uh, mic. Karanda, Samuel, and mute your mics. Volume. Francis, yes. we have talked about joinings, you, uh, how to join metals. I want to see if people are getting anything. Can you say something? 
Uh, uh, today we have learned about seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is all about soda in volume. Okay, <laughs> you guys are And they may have explained a lot of things. Just in the see, see, and soldering. The processes of soldering. I couldn't even remember apart from soldering. Ah, kuna. See, easy to connect to. We have talked of the mechanical joint, which is the splices. To me, some splices. Yeah, you have to use cramp connectors, Like now, you can see the tap slice, the rat slice. Yeah. Should we say my iso? Now you see soldering. <laughs> hmm? Okay, Samuel. Yes. Say something. Nini ngono na sema yeye mambo ya kwa nini ya connectors. Uh huh. Yeah, the red connectors here are not. Uh huh. So yo yo mbo dello vizuri vinye ina connectors au busi ni anat. Uh huh. So how will be the wires be connected using that nut anymore? You know, the, uh, normally when we have such connections, there's somewhere that you have to insert the nuts, the, the, the wires, isn't it? Uh, so after you put in the wires, so the nuts are just used to cover or to tighten, to finish for the finishing, like now harper, isn't it? So easy, uh, easy, nikama, nikama ni cranking. So the moment umyengisha, so inafunika, so that these are normally used kwa, kama kuna maji, place penye iko na maji, ama anything just to cover the final connection. So that, that you cannot be exposed to harsh weather. Oh. Is, that, is that okay? Okay, mute your mics again. We go to the printed circuit boards. Printed circuit boards, uh, the PCB design process, immense blackboard into chemical uh, bath and wanted materials removed by chemicals, drill holes for components, Use small drill press and very large bits, clean board surface and prepare for soldering and components. So these are the, the, the PCB is called the printed circuit board. Normally also some, some people call it the motherboard. It's normally for electronics and it's like the control center or the control board for any electronic component. So I'm, I'm loading another slide. An overview of techniques. We go through this overview of techniques of joining dissimilar materials. It's part of what we have said, but let us just have an, an overview. How metals and polymers can be joined together harmoniously. So the growing prevalence of polymer materials in structure and at automotive applications because of their low weight, high specific strength, elasticity, and low cost has spurred research into the combination of polymers and metals in manufacturing. So the parts with metal to metal polymer joint now are in high demand in the autom automotive and aerospace industries. One of the goals of the use of the similar joints is to enhance product design flexibility so that differing materials can be used in efficient functional manner based on their specific properties. So we go down to some of these methods are current metal plastic joining method when you join a metal to plastic. Now several joining techniques are commonly used for the hybrid joint between metal and polymer workplaces. So they are adhesive bonding, mechanical fastening and welding. Each joining technique has advantage and disadvantages. The most appropriate method will depend on application and service. So me mechanical fastening originally used for metal to metal joining. Mechanical fastening is now used for, me for metal to plastic joining too. So it comprises using the clamping together of such screws and rivets. Uh, you, you 
remember the video to talk to us about the rivet for joining formation without fusing and joint surfaces. So it requires mechanical operations such as drilling holes and making screw threads. Different types of mechanical joints technically techniques exist for metal to plastic joint, but emphasis currently is on riveting. So riveting is the most important technique these days used for mechanical to plastic joining. Now, because it establishes a reliable joint, some types of riveting need a heating cycle during the rivet and are heated before the fastening so that the rivet shrink upon cooling. So clamping in component tightly. Test results show that the rivet joint between the metallic and the polymetric material, the process depends on shape thickness and their geometric parameters. So the next slide is about the adhesive, uh, uh, adhesive bonding. This, is, uh, this bonding is a solid state joining technique that relies on the formation of intermolecular forces between the work places, work pieces and the polymetric adhesive itself or the joint formation. It involves the use of polymetric adhesive, which undergoes a chemical or physical reactions for joint formation. So the use of adhesive metal joining has grown sub substantially in recent years because of the development of very strong tough adhesives that can withstand both static and alternating loads. Also, they generally weigh less than mechanical fasteners. However, adhesive bonds joints can prove to be problematic because of the bonded joint cannot be dis 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 disassembled without damage and can emit harmful environmental emissions. So that is adhesive bonding. Another one is welding. And we are going, welding is a, a thermal joining method. We are going to talk in full uh, in, at length about it. So it's conventional wel welding process, such as the shield metal arc welding, gas welding, gas metal arc welding, and submerged arc welding have been used in welding the similar materials and metal to metal joints. So welding is normally for metal to metal joints because they are metals that can be welded. However, the high energy inputs of this fusion welding process result in material metal logical distortion and hinders this application as well as the metal to polymer joints. So mel melting temperature of metals is extremely high compared to the melting temperature of polymers. Hence, polymers tend to degrade before metals can melt. Imagine our welding techniques for joining the similar materials are we have the ultrasonic welding. Ultrasonic welding is the welding state for joining techniques that initiated collinses. Co 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 via the simulation application of the localized high frequency vibration energy with moderate clamping force. This welding technique is classified, characterized by low energy input and requires a clamping and positioning of the, work, of the workplace between the welding tool. Then the ultrasonic there is there. And then we, another type of welding is the laser welding. Laser welding offers unique manufacturing opportunities. It complements the fabrication and process of joints that previously had been difficult or impossible to achieve by welding by other welding methods. So laser welding of metals to polymers can be used to achieve stable metallic, chemical, and covalent bonds between metal and polymers. Another type of welding is the friction star welding. This welding process comprises of three distinct phases, plunging, stirring, and retracting. During welding, a high-speed rotating tool with a probe pin is plunged at the specific rate into the overlapping weld spot until the solder of the tool contains an upper workpiece. Friction spot jointing. 
friction spot JD is vibrant of linear friction star welding, except that there is no linear movement of the tool during joining. So that is now the types of welding or the how we can join dissimilar objects or substances, how we can join things that are not of the same, things that are not of the same material. So I'm loading again another presentation now to show the, the methods of welding. Other methods of joining materials, we have burning. The method of burning uh, of joining together is as follows. Two pieces of metal are joined at place and are placed in position and fixed so that the stream of molten metal may be run between the joint until the ends are joined by the same heat. So the molten metal then has been flowing to waste is then checked. The joint fill up and left to cool. So the joint is usually embedded in sand. When cool, it is removed and lamps trimmed off. So leaving the metal in one piece, in one piece and without any sign of joint. Auto, uh, auto, autogenous welding, it is the thermit welding and is done as follows. The thermit, which consists of finely divided aluminum and oxide and iron is placed on a cream which has a hole in the bottom fixed and fusible plug. And then we have another one called a blowpipe welding. A blowpipe welding is carried out by means of various gases such as acetylene, oxygen, hydrogen, and now fairly general, general now fairly general in its application. The gases are under pressure and drawn from cylinders. The mixing of them takes place in the mixing chamber, and this is normally mechanically done in industries. And then we have electric welding. is the common welding that we know. is very suitable for reputation works. It is very quick, and dissimilar metals may be welded, but it requires special plan and fitting for each particular job. The operation is somewhat as follows. The piece of to be welded are held tightly. One, one by each arm or guide, and these are insulated one from the other. The electric current is turned on and the ends are brought together, but no quite not quite touching. So this causes the electric arc to form at the ends of the well and the heat of the center outside. Ordinary welding. Now, ordinary welding is done by the smith consists of thickening up of the upsetting and is called the ends to, to be joined to allow for subsequent reduction by hammering them and raising the pieces. The welding heat laying one of the top on of the other and hammering them together. So the work is heated in a coal or chalk fire assisted by a blast of air without uh, and, and wrought iron and mild steel are usually brought to a bright white heat and tool steel to a dull white yellow heat. So that is also another type of joining metal. So brazing and soldering, we saw it in the video and I'm going to replay the video again for those who joined late. It consists of joining metals by means of alloys which are heated and fused together with the edges of the work so that the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the alloy with the metals being joined. So there are three essential of this kind of work. That is the joint must be clean, the, the plug must be used, and the solder or alloy used must melt. Then we have a cold gas blowpipe. You have talked about it, how it works. Other methods of joining metals, we can see them there. 
Uh huh. Permanent metals of joining metals, it's the soft soldering, brazing, gas welding, arc welding. We'll see how they happen uh, in the next slide. We go on. So joining of metals, uh, as we are leading, we have talked about that. I want us to look at what we have not looked at. We have talked of welding, advantages of welding. Welding provides a permanent joint. That's one of the advantages of welding. Welding joint can be stronger than the parent materials in the Fiddler metal is used that has strength properties better than that of the parent material. It is economical way to join components in terms of material usage and fabrication cost. Other methods assembly require for drilling. Advantages or uh, disadvantages of welding, it has labor cost and more since manual welding is done mostly. Dangerous to use because of the presence of high heat and pressure. Disassembly is not possible as welding produces a strong joint, meaning because when you have already welded, it's very difficult to separate the joint. Some of the welding defects cannot be identified when we, intro we reduce the strength. Now, types of welding we have talked about. Welding process can be broadly classified into two, fusion welding and solid state welding. Fusion welding, fusion welding process Heat is applied to melt. Uh, is, is applied to melt the joint. In many fuse welding properties, the filter metal added the molten pool during the welding of application. The process and provides strength to the weld joint. Now, when no filler metal is used, that fusion welding operation referred to as the Antinia's weld. Now, types of welding, uh, types of uh, types are like the of the fusion welding are arc welding, resistance welding, oxygen fuel gas welding, electronic beam welding, and the laser welding. We are going to get these notes. I'll be posting them to you. Arc welding is the operation is the operation from an electric arc is used to produce heat energy, and the base metal is heated. Sometimes both pressure and heat are applied. Now you can see if we have two parts of the material, now this is how the arc welding is done. They are joined together. You can see now the base material is here and the molten pool is here. And this is the filler metal. You, you have to get a filler metal and the arc is here and the shield gas is here. So the penetration, it penetrates and you can see the weld joint is here. So this is the molten pool and the, uh, the, the joint now has been put together and it's now the molten joint, you can see it there. The resistance welding, the operation, electric resistance is, you can see how it is done. Electrical re resistance is generated from the flow of current that generates heat energy. Between two con contacting surfaces and, the and are held in pressure. So the gas welding, ox fuel gas welding, is the welding operation in which heat generated or by hot flame generated mixed by gas and acetylene. Solid state welding, now what is it? Let us look at it. This is a method joining that is done by coalescence co resulting from application of pressure only or combined combination of heat and pressure. Even if heat is used, the temperature in the process is less than the melt point of the me metals being welded. The fusion welding, uh, you can see it, it, these are the types of the solid state welding. We have the diffusion welding, friction welding, and the ultrasonic welding. So diffusion welding, two parts of the surface are held together and 
and part at, uh, at the elevated temperature and parts of join the solid state by diffusion. Then friction welding, the joining occurs by heat of friction, plastic deformation between two surfaces. Ultrasonic welding, you can see it's a moderate pressure is applied between two parts of alternating motion. Now, well joint configuration, this is called a bat joint. These are, these are very important notes for you because they are normally in your exam. This one is called a corner joint. This is a lap joint. When you want to join them, when they lap on another, this is a T joint and this is an edge joint. We have the weld joint. You can hear the inside joint, the outside single fillet joint corner, the double fillet lap, and the double T joint lap. We have a square groove and weld one side when, when it's welding. Single bevel groove weld, you can see it. It's a bevel because it has a V there. The single V groove weld, the plunge weld, uh, you plunge holes and then you, you join, you, you weld on the holes. The slot weld is there. Then the spot weld and the seam weld. Monopoly uh, mo mo morphology of the fission well. You can see how the fission zone is there. Now we have the well interface, the fission zone, and how the fission zone consists of the mixture of the filler metal and the base metal that completely melted. So a higher degree of homogeneity is present among the components, the, the metal, the components of the metal that have been melted during welding. You can see how it happens. This is the fusion area, and th that is how they join and melt. So welding interface, those are the explanation of the fusion welding. A high energy in fusion welding, and, and, and then we have some calculations there. So that is fusion welding. So that is the end of that slide. And the uh, arc welding, I've already talked about the arc welding, how it is done, the notes, you're going to see them. The two types of electrodes that are used, we have consumable and non-consumable. Consumable electrodes, these are the, the rods that are that are used for, for, for welding. The presence of the wire from 200 to 450 millimeters length and less than 10 millimeter diameter. So the non-consumable rods are the, are not consumed during the arc welding, though this is the case as some du duplication occurs between the vibrations. Shield uh, under arc welding, we have the shielding gas welding. The type in the shielding gas, we use the gas to weld, and like where we use the electricity covers the arc electrode tip and well pulled from external atmosphere. The metal brings joints that are chemically reactive to oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen in the atmosphere. The polarity is there and some formulas for arc gas welding. So this is we have the molten weld solidified metal weld metal the slag is here for the arc the gas the gas is produced the protective gas for electrode coating you can see it here in the direction of travel that is still in arc welding That is still in arc welding. The notes are, will be given. The plasma arc welding is there. Resistance welding. In resistance welding is a fusion welding process that uses a combined effect of heat and pressure to accomplish joining. This heat is generated by electrical resistance to current flow at a location to be welded. Weld nugget is generated by this process. So the resistance welding uses no shielding gases. As you can see, the resistance welding. A 
uh -huh, you can now see the importance is a typical uh, a typical car body has got the gap now now that is used to well you can see how this in this process the fission of electrode is done by electron having opposing charges at one location and the shape thickens as has to be less than three millimeters for a good spot well so the shape of the electrode tip is important like a round hexagonal square it is c so i want to to run a small video and then we can proceed a small video i'm loading a small video just some two minutes Okay, listen to that. No, that is not the one that I wanted. I'm bringing another one. Okay, get to listen to this.
Okay. That is now about the welding. You've seen how the arc welding is done there using the gas and how the permanent joint is being is produced. Then we proceed. You can see how uh, the resistant now steam welding is done there and how the strong joints are being produced there. The gas welding that we have seen from the video and how the flames, you can see the exhaling level, feather flame. And then the problems and advantages of the oxygen uh, welding is the combination of the acetylene and oxygen is highly flammable and hence hazardous to the environment. So it is unsuitable for the presence of much above of the one atmosphere. It is mandatory for the welder to wear gloves, goggles, and uh, ETC for preventive measures. You've seen how that guy was equipped with all the protective measures. The equipment is relevantly cheap and portable. It is used as an economical versatile pro processes. It is rarely used in weld plates. Other gases used uh, in this are ethylene. These are the propane, hydrogen, and natural gases, which, has also, which are also very important. So all these notes, you're going to get them in the portal. And I'm going to put a restriction for the, the people who can, who can access these notes are those that uh, are uh, uh, those people that attended the class. So if you didn't attend the class, you cannot be able to access the notes. So it's good to attend the class because even the attendance is, has already been taken there. So that is the intermittent welding. Soul state welding processes. We said that in soul state welding, joining of metals are performed with the help of heat and pressure or pressure alone. So the metal large bond is created with little or no melting of the base materials, metals to to uh, metallurgically bond to similar or dissimilar metals with two metals must be brought into in intimate contact so that their atomic forces attract each other. So we had talked about that, the solid state. You can see that the rolling well of the bonding. All these adjoining processes. We have the friction welding. You can see it. The, the two materials are brought together and and, free, and then, then they, are, they are made to rub each other and then rotated until they can bond. Uh, you can see how it's done there, how it is formed. You can see the solder, the welding direction, how it is done, the nugget, the advanced slide, the, the, the retreating side, the friction star. And then an, an uncombustible rotating tool with especially which is a specially designed pin and the, the shoulder is inserted into the abutting edges of the sheets or the plate to be joined and transverse and the line of join. So the tool serves two primary functions. You can see them there. The welding defect, porosity, and then presence of small void in the weld metal formed by gases and trapped during solidification. It usually results from the inclusion of atmospheric gases. And then we have the shrinkage voids, the solid infusions. In proper world profile, you can see the good profile, the under, undercut, the underfill that has not been filled well. We have the overlapping well there. Brazing. Now we are going to the last term that is brazing. Brazing is the joining process in which a filler metal is melted and distributed by capillary action between the phase, that is the contact surface of the metal joint. The base material does not melt in brazing, and the only only the filler melts. So in brazing, the filler metal has a melting temperature. 
Advantages of brazing. Brazing can be used to join large variety of dissimilar metals. The piece of different thickness can easily be joined by brazing. Thick wall, thick wall tubes of large gauge sheet metal assembles, no joinable metals or well abrasing. You have the complex malt component assemblies and the in, inaccessible joint areas, which could be welded by gas. Then the materials are there for brazing. We have aluminium, silicon, copper, copper and phosphorus, copper and zinc gold and silver, nickel and alloys, and then silver alloys also. Those are the materials that are used. Now the brazing fluxes, we have characteristics of a good flux include lower melting temperature, lower viscosity, uh, so that it can be displaced by the filler metal, then facilitates welting and pro protects the joint until solidification of the filter metal. Then torch brazing. Uh, one of the basic methods of heating various brazing processes are torch brazing. Torch brazing uh, flux is applied with the part surface of the torch and is on direct flux against the work. And then after the work part, joint areas have been heated at a suitable temperature, and then the filler wire is added. I'm going to show you how that is done. The diffuse fuels used in torch brazing include acetylene, propane, and other gases. So torch-based welding is often performed manually and skilled work must be employed. So other types of brazing are furnace brazing, induction brazing, resistance brazing, deep brazing, and infrared brazing. You can see how it is done. Soldering. We have talked about soldering and I'm, not, I'm going to with the slide. So I'll, I'll put this again once so that guys can see. I'm just putting this. So let us watch this again. So as we finish about joining of metals, watch that again for the last time. Not that, sorry. Yes. Now, that is the, our last one, so that we finish.
Okay, that is about the video. I hope guys have gotten that. And we are now okay. Up to that point, I would like